Section 5.3, bisectors and triangles. So we're going to look at circumcenters and incenters today to figure out things that have to do with perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors. So when they talk about something being concurrent, that just means when three or more lines cross at the same point. Um, that's a concurrent point. Um, point, of concur point of intersection of concurrent lines is the point of concurrency, which is basically the same definition. Um, one thing I do want you guys to add to your theorem is theorem 5.6. I want you to write circumcenter by it um, rather than concurrency of perpendicular bisectors. That's kind of a mouthful. So it basically stands for circumcenter. So you can put both names there. The one that I really would like you to use, though, is circumcenter. Um, what this one is is the perpendicular bisectors of the sides cross at a point. Sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it's on it, and sometimes it's outside it. Okay, for this one, if you look at it, the perpendicular bisectors of the sides are these. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to construct the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle. We're going to see where they cross, and then after that we should be able to draw a circle around the triangle, and it should hit every vertice no matter how big or small your, your triangle is. So that's the interesting part is to see if everybody can get their circle to touch all of the vertices, okay? Um, what happens though is when you're doing this one, um, the parts that are the same are these. That is the same as this, is the same as that. And that's why we can draw a circle around this one and have it touch every vertice. Okay, so the light blue ones are the ones that end up being the same. The perpendicular bisectors are what cause those blue ones to be the same. Okay, so you bisect the sides, and that makes the segment going to the angle, which basically would be the radius of the circle, um, the same. Okay, now this is what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to construct the perpendicular bisectors, and then we're going to put the point here, and stretch it out to one of these vertices, and when you draw the circle around it, it should hit every single vertice. So we'll see if that happens tomorrow. Um, make sure you write a note about this. The circumcenter can be inside, outside, or on. So tomorrow we'll make note of this again. Acute triangles, this circumcenter is inside. For a right triangle, notice the circumcenter is on the hypotenuse or on that longest side opposite the right angle. And for an obtuse triangle, it is outside. And we're going to do all of these tomorrow as well. Okay, so inside, outside, or on. Okay, here's an example. What are the coordinates of the circumcenter of the triangle with vertices 0, 6, 0, 0, and 4, 0? Okay, so 0, 6. Zero, 0, and 4, 0. So you would graph all the points. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take care of the two sides that are either horizontal or vertical. Those are the easiest ones to do. We are going to do an example where there's two sides that are not horizontal or vertical, and then what do you do? Okay, so we aren't just going to do the easy ones. You will have to know how to do the other ones as well. What the circumcenter says is we bisect the sides. Excuse me. So if we look at the side that's on the bottom, it is four units long. If we bisect it, where would that put it? Two. It halves it, right? And it's going to go vertical 
to the horizontal line that's there. So with this one, your line would be right here, just like that. Okay, so we bisect the side. What do you, how about if you can't tell what the, what the middle is? Then you do midpoint, and we've used that formula already. You add the two and divide by two for each part. So this line right here is x equals two. Okay, so if you needed an equation, which you might at some point, um, it is cutting through the x-axis, so it's x equals two. The other one will go the other direction. This is six units long, so we're gonna make this one at three. This one right here is y equals three. And the point that they cross at is the one. Now, if I would have used something straight, it would have ended up right there. So it is going to be the ordered pair, two, three. Okay, so if equations are asked, it's the one in orange and the one in purple. If not, you need the, the ordered pair only. Now. If we look back to where the circumcenter should have been on a right triangle, is it on the hypotenuse? Is that where it was supposed to be? Acute was inside, right? Obtuse was outside. Right triangle is on it. So you know for sure if it's a right triangle, kind of where it should be um, placed anyway. Um, you can't just, you can kind of eyeball it, but what you're really doing is cutting the sides in, in half, and that's kind of where it goes. So definitely use a ruler on these so that you know exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, let's look at one more just so you can kind of see one. Um, we have 2, 7. Ten, seven. This one didn't work out so swell. And 10, 3. Okay, this is a right triangle as well, even though it's outside. Um, we are looking at bisecting the sides, making it perpendicular and where they cross. So this is another right triangle, right? It should be on that hypotenuse length. For me, it might not end up there because I hand drew it, but for you guys, you should be spot on. So what we're gonna do is half each of the sides. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it should be right here. Um, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, x equals six. For the other one, it is one, two, three, four. Y equals five. So if I name this point, it would be six, five. Okay, and it's a right triangle and it is on the hypotenuse length. Okay, so you can kind of tell where they're supposed to be. Um, if you have an acute triangle, it should be inside. If you have an obtuse triangle, it should be outside. Okay? Right triangle is on. Okay. A town planner wants to locate a new fire station equidistant from the elementary, middle, and high schools. Where should he locate the station? So first of all, we're going to connect these. And of course, you guys should use a ruler. It kind of looks like this angle right here is a right angle. I'm just kind of going with that. Um, what you would do is you would construct the perpendicular bisectors of the sides. Now I'm going to put dotted lines in here where I think they should go. If it's a right angle, it should be somewhere on HM. Okay, so for this one, we'll go there. For this one, because this makes a right angle right here. So it should be like right there. Okay, so basically you're gonna say, construct the perpendicular bisectors of HE and EM, where they cross would be the circumcenter. 
The second one, I want you to name it in center. So go back there, highlight the words circumcenter and in center. Concurrency of angle bisectors, it's much easier to say in center because that's what it is. But they kind of sound the same, so you and your head have to get keep track of which one is which. Um, for this one, the bisectors of the angles are concurrent at a point. So here is an angle bisector. Here is an angle bisector. Here is an angle bisector. Where they cross is that in center. But notice the things that are the same this time. This one is the same as this one is the same as that one. So basically, it's the opposite of circumcenter. Circumcenter, the lengths from that point to the angles are the same. Here, from the point to the bisectors, or the perpendicular segments are the same. So angles are bisected. It makes those segments going perpendicular um, the same. Um, in center is always inside the triangle. So tomorrow when we do in center, um, we should be able to draw a circle inside the triangle and hit all the sides. Um, that one's kind of tricky. Okay, so the other one's much easier to do. This one is a bit tricky um, just because um, our, our equipment isn't super. I mean, it is what it is. We'll just do our best, but this one's tough. Okay, so what do we do? If you are struggling with these, you were able to write the pictures in your theorems, right? If you didn't, that's your deal, <laughs> but I would. So you're going to take out your theorem and look at the picture and see which one it matches, okay? Now with this one, the things that I'm looking at are the angle bisectors. So angle bisectors go within center, and the parts that are supposed to be the same are these. Okay, so looking at this, GE, this one, is 2x minus 7. GF is this one, x plus 4. So if they're marked the same, shouldn't they just be equal? Yeah, so that's all we do. So in order to get there, though, you're like, God, are those equal? Do they add up to something? What are they? So 2x minus 7 equals x plus 4. So x equals 11. And then GD... That's the other one, okay? So they're asking for this one. Well, wouldn't they all be the same? So it wouldn't matter which one you plugged it into because they're all the same. So x plus 4 would be 11 plus 4. GD must be 15. And they can ask for any of those. Now, the other thing that's important is there's a bunch of right triangles in there. At some point, depending on what they give you, you could use Pythagorean theorem, so keep that in mind just in case there's more things in there than, um, than what you know what to do with. A lot of times you can't if there's not enough information, like this one, you couldn't do that with, um, but sometimes there is. This one, I believe, is exactly the same. Okay, there is one more that I want you to look at.